This is episode 140 of Let's Talk Geek, your weekly dose of everything geeky. In the show today, Firefox and Chrome plugins. What now? America shuts down and the impact echoes even in geekdom. And Samsung's killer feature in South Africa. Thanks for joining us. Joining me, we have Luke. Hello. Johan. Hello. I'm Jan. Luke, what manner of geek are you? I am an every geek's geek, but mostly a gamer as well on top of that. So I'm into everything, science and whatever. Just throw it Gadgetry. at Gadgetry. That's all good. Bring what? it on. <laughs> <laughs> Johan, what manner of geek are you? Probably broadcasting and video. So we're having some good times at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's good times. We're not mentioning it in the show today. Uh, maybe we'll do like a quick mention towards the end. But it's been an exciting time for the broadcasting industry in South Africa. My name is Jan Vermeulen. I write for my broadband.co.za. And uh, that, by default, makes me a broadband and gadget geek. Um, I, that occupies my, my daily time. And so whenever you hear me geeking out about something, it's invariably got to do with how fast we're connecting to the interwebs. Slow. How oh, yeah. slow we're connecting to the interwebs. Oh, good correction. Trust me. <laughs> Again, first world. Good public post transport. And internet's not a problem. Uh, you've just returned from Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, yeah, but Amsterdam... I'm still recovering. Yeah, Amsterdam <laughs> is, a, is, is a different kettle of fish. Um, that said, uh, we always start the show with a bit of a random. And so this week at 140, why not the character limit of Twitter and where it comes from. So where does it come from? Yeah. The, the character limit of Twitter comes from the SMS standard, which um, takes 160 characters, right? Yeah. Now, here's something interesting. That is with seven-bit in, seven based encoding. Um, and so the exact bit width of the SMS channel is 1120 bits. Don't ask how I know that. And so those bits... Wikipedia. Uh, no. I actually oh. went and read the specs for an article. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Th those, those bits are then um, assigned however you need them. So if you need to send characters that are not in the seven-bit based character set, so if you need to send Korean characters or Chinese characters or you know, any, you know, any character set, Russian characters that might not be in there, then you're going to need 8-bit Unicode. Yeah. And then immediately your character limit goes down. Um, so to be absolutely <laughs> technically correct, <laughs> Twitter's character limit comes from the 7-bit character set um, okay. that SMS used. And the, those 20 characters wow. were for the username, basically. <laughs> so the 20 characters that, that okay, got shaved I get off. You. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so Twitter started off as a service that you could um, not just subscribe to online and follow people there. They would push it to your phone. And that's, that's how it was really meant to work. You SMS into Twitter, and then your tweet gets broadcast to a bunch of people. It was supposed to be an SMS broadcast system, effectively. And as we know today, it's evolved into something far bigger far and far costlier, it would seem, with Twitter getting to an initial public offering in the U.S., um, to something far bigger than a I simple like it now. It's better now. <laughs> Let's keep it the way it is. <laughs> it's changed over the years. Um, well, it, it's, the focus is no longer on SMS as a delivery mechanism. Um, it's now on apps and the web as a delivery mechanism. And so, um, yeah, it's, I, I'd say now that I'm asking about Twitter. Is it actually... Well, it depends on how you want to see it. So they've they've had to introduce some sort of way to make money. So they've got yep. and they've got promoter tweets. They've got oh, advertising yes. yeah, being yeah, pushed yeah. at you, and that sort of thing now. Um, but yeah, that's basic. Other than that, the it's one the thing same they're still service. lacking, which which Flipboard at least gives you, is f in, uh, um, images. Flipboard. Flipboard. Okay, so if you want to actually enjoy Twitter, we, oh, I see what yeah, you yeah. mean. So you subscribe to Twitter using Flipboard, and Flipboard goes and fetches images related yeah. to the links you're viewing. Okay, I'm so mistaken. at least you, uh, on Twitter you don't get that. I mean, you got to click every time to see a guy's photo. Well, it takes you to a third party you've site. Got and, a good Twitter client on a device, then you get that functionality. And, and Twitter has uh, also published the specification for um, syndicating feeds that um, will tell Twitter that uh, where to pull images and stuff from. Yeah. So you can actually tweet a link, and then Twitter, if your website is coded correctly will go and fetch the related metadata of that link so that it actually bombs in like a little Twitter panel underneath the tweet. Okay, so, so they're doing what Flipboard's doing in any case. Yeah. Um, well, uh, to, to some degree, Twi Flipboard well. is, is much prettier. Yeah. Um, I must give it that. It's a very pretty app. It's very nice. Probably yeah. the, one of the best apps that came from Apple to Android. 
You can you can say that. I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Luke, you found something a date based that I thought was pretty cool. Peanuts by Charles M. Schultz is first published on this day, the second of October. Yes, 1950. Yes, 1950. So very cool. It's ancient. Uh, and like I said before the show, is uh, it, Peanuts is one of those things of we've all heard of it. It seems so far generationally. It's like where does this come from? We can't even relate relate to that uh, show anymore. You know, or that strip anymore. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Quick correction by the mixer. Good job. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, that's the end of the randoms. That takes us into the quick geek. The rules of the quick geek are simple. It's completely post- poached from QI. Uh, from the BBC. He who is most interesting wins. Um, the mixer, if she, show, she so chooses, might assign points to us and decree a winner at the end. A winner might also come from the IRC, IRC channel, I think that's um, it. which is <laughs> who usually win because they are far more interesting than we are <laughs> on, 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 they on can any be given topic. snarkier than we can be. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. First up, Luke, something you found. YouTube audio library launches with 150 royalty-free songs. What's this? So, YouTube being YouTube, and they're, they're getting tired of taking down videos because of you know, copyright infringement due to music violations and so forth. So, what, what they're offering is that you can now make use of their quite limited, but I, I'm hoping it will grow over time, uh, library of music that you can use for any... YouTube video that you like you it's royalty free you basically you must just say oh this is the track that I used and there you go you can use it for whatever you desire you okay. can even use it outside of YouTube which I thought was pretty yeah. spanking as well what, what, what about existing creative li- creative commons licensed content can you have that are they going to include that in the library so that the copyright I violator would doesn't flag so. it uh, but I don't I, it's not like that at the moment okay. uh, so I, w- I would assume well I, w- I would at least hope that in future that you would say oh this is the license or this yeah. is where I got it from sort of the you start know. of a system yeah, that improves exactly. the copyright violation right. auto detector thing so that even if you do get flagged for content that may, might be creative commons that you can say well look I got it from here or you can just automatically say yeah it's or, fine or even it's better, legit um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. or even better Google now yeah. would just they can know. do it for you yes, yes. that'd be great so you can Everyone saves a whole bunch of time, and it's really neat to. Yeah. And the tracks themselves, I listen to like one or two. They're not bad. Uh, they they they've tagged them per category and per type and all of this jazz, and uh, it does what it says on tin. You know. Nice. Okay, but how do you get to it? There is a there is a URL to a catalog, um, which I have. Is it not be in the show notes? Yes. on the platform. So it's on yes. the YouTube platform. It's on the YouTube platform. Okay, you so can, probably you the video even, editor. Yeah, you can even download the tracks okay. as well. 150 is not that big, but it's a good it's start. It's a good start. Yeah. Well, well uh, it's it's a bigger start than some of the than some of the um, free content or the Creative Commons licensed uh, content catalogs out there had to start with. So yeah, not bad. But they're I also hope. a lot later than those. So <laughs> <laughs> and it's Google. We demand bigger, better, faster. Uh, oh, or how does Doth put it? Those that are interested, youtube.com forward slash show forward slash free music. Cool. There we have it. I'm going to move us along. And Samsung is fudging their benchmarks in a big way. Now, now, this isn't something that we didn't know. Um, they, the, the news emerged that they were fudging benchmarks with the Samsung Galaxy S4, but they swept that under the carpet by saying, no, 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 we, we don't just put it. Basically, what they do is they put exceptions inside the the uh, the, the code of their ROM um, to say, okay, you know what, boost the CPU or, or an artificially boost performance when you detect certain apps. And Samsung said, it's not just benchmarking apps we do this for, we do this for our own apps as well. S-Voice, gallery apps, uh, the camera, all kinds of things get allocated extra resources or get access to extra resources. Um, okay. uh, so what this thing effectively does, um, it would seem at least what Ars Technica was able to glean was it um, it um, unthrottles the CPU. So w- what these quad-core processors do is they, they let three of the four cores go idle, and then the last remaining core runs at a really low clock speed. That's to preserve battery life. Mm. And so when a particular app is running, it, it turns on all the cores and maxes them out at max okay, speed. Okay, but this thing is running Linux underneath. So actually all it's doing is it's just enabling multi-thread on a certain piece of software. 
Uh, no. Um, so what it's what it's doing is it's it's removing all the processor resource, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. All right. So they were unable to figure out exactly what Sam, <laughs> all the things Samsung. Um, Our RC channel is getting very good. Really. <laughs> we'll we'll start reading some comments in a sec. Um, but what they um, what, uh, Ars Technica was unable to determine exactly what Samsung was doing, but they were able to figure out it was doing something because what they did was they took a, a popular benchmarking application, Geekbench. Yeah. They took the APK. They ripped it out. They renamed it to Stealth Bench, <laughs> changed the bundle name, and lo and behold, the benchmarks performed lower, up to 20% performance boost that Samsung was giving these things effectively. But now are they, are they overclocking their clocks or are they just ramping them to full? No, they're ramping them to full, but there's something else happening as well under the hood. Um, so uh, it, if you go and uh, look at the Ars Technica article, um, it's actually interesting. They, they add the, uh, the bundle names to an array and then they assign that array um, to a particular name that's quite interesting. And um, it's not in the, the article I'm linking to. It's in the original article. I'll go look for it. Um, but basically, it's, it, it removes any sort of performance management that was running on that phone. It's removed um, for, while these apps are running. Um, and, but this time around, they, um, Ars Technica pulled the code, decompiled the code, m- uh, mashed it up so that it like, looks like semi-readable Java, and there is not a single non-benchmarking application in that piece of code. They are just doing this for benchmarks. There's, there's, oh, like, wow. there's no like trying to wangle, oh, but this is for... And, and this is on the Note 3. To, uh, I was just thinking now, this isn't the first time I've heard of these kinds of practices, though. Wasn't there like two or three months ago some other crowd or even Samsung themselves? It was Samsung on the Galaxy S4. They did the exact same thing. Oh, what okay. about the company called Net Dynamics? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before this, in, in, in similar industries, NVIDIA was fudging stuff. But every time this happens, uh, people discover it. There's an outcry, and they get shamed into stopping. So let's hope Samsung has some shame yeah. <laughs> and, and, and stops. Do they because, care? Because other, well, it's well, e- either that or the benchmarking applications are going to have to find a way they're just going to have to start stealthing the benchmark application. So I mean, at this point in time, do they care, really? Samsung. Yeah, do they really care? I don't know. Look, I think it'll just be for average Joe. I mean, do you, you look at the graphs You look formula. at the graphs and you say, oh, uh, well, this was yeah. one phone's doing better yeah. consistently. And, and you basically have to find a source, a new yes. source that you know, like Ars Technica or Anantec, um, who knows about these practices yes. and will you know, to go to some length to subvert them. Um, and then work on their benchmarks. That's the only way to get any sort of usable um, information out of it, unfortunately. Um, but still interesting. But still, well, yeah. The still, dedication to go and actually find this is just amazing. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and uh, Ars Technica's story behind what caused, what caused the, the red flag is, is interesting as well. Um, it's, it's basically got to do with their experience with similar chipsets. So they said the LG G2, which they test, mm. has exactly the same CPU in it. So they're exactly the same system on chip, which means the same GPU and the same processor. And yet the Samsung was just knocking its socks off. And so they went, mm, <laughs> Wait no. this is fishy. And, and they said, and now what the funny thing is, they, they, they fixed it. They ra- ran their stealth benchmarks. And the Samsung, Gal- the Samsung Note, the Note 3, still won. There was no need to do this, really, because okay. it still beats them. It just beats them more convincingly Fairly. now. Fairly. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Then the, the other big news to hit the Geeko sphere oh, yes. is, um, is everything coming from Valve about their Steam oh. ecosystem. It's, Holy hell. <laughs> I hope it, they get this right. It's yeah. looking really interesting. So it started off um, with basically announcing that they're going to have a set of specs for people who want to build Steam Boxen. Steam yeah, they say like, here, yeah, here's an OS, and then it just exploded from there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it started off with Steam OS. Now it's going to be hardware specs to build Steam boxes, and then it's a controller. They've announced a. I missed that one. What do you the, mean a controller? They, they announced a controller because they said the problem is translating PC games to a console gaming experience with console controllers that didn't seem to be working. So they've designed a controller, which instead of having two thumbsticks, mm. has two trackpads, basically. Okay. 
Um, so they say that that's going to give better control over the mouse. And then they've also placed the buttons at weird locations. That's something that's uh, caused a bit of controversy and a bit of kickback from people is they said that the, the fact that the, 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 the you know, A, B, C, D or you know, A, B, X, Y buttons mm-hmm. or whatever are not at the conventional locations um, is going to count against this controller. That said, they said they're opening this controller to all kinds of hackery. hackery. Um, from the beginning. Okay, just just quickly. Eh? Who's played a first-person shooter on your phone? <laughs> I have. It's awful. I've played no, one. No. <laughs> Who has played? No, I, I have I've done. Played okay. yeah. Does the controls not look a hundred percent the same? It does. One hundred percent. Because it's almost you, identical. You track, yeah, it's yeah. identical, and that's your two buttons at the top. So the three <laughs> buttons at the bottom, yeah, you know, that's not there. But think about it. It's the, exactly the, the problem same. is, is uh, the only <laughs> decent first-person shooters I've played on a smartphone are on Rails. Uh, that seems to really be the only way to make them work. Look, I think also if you look at the controller itself, it's more of a translation of how those keys would be on the keyboard if you were j- using, you know, no, your finger it, placements. It, it's not. I mean, because now you're if you look at like thumbs. Y and X are, that would be like where E and C would be, sort of. Uh, yeah, but you don't play with a thumb. Yeah, sure. So that's I, I look that that's a cell phone. That's the controls you get on a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> when you're playing a first player, yeah. So now just give us an LCD between the the two pads. Well, I think that is. Oh, it's, okay. Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that it is a touch display as well. Yes. Um, but they also showed variants where it's four actual buttons. Yeah. Um, so I don't okay, know if it's going to be like a, like a low-cost version. It's, it's fairly open, and hopefully they'll be open to uh, criticism of the bu- button layouts and that sort of thing that'll let people move it around. I would say what makes it really cool still is that the, the keys are still fully remappable, so you can change them to whatever you like. Okay. So it's not like your traditional controller. These are All your right, keys. So live with it. When are we uh, going to see a beta that always? Uh, I've signed up for the hardware trial. Um, I've tried as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they they are actually opened up to trials, and we'll see who gets in and what they say. OS. Yeah, yeah. Everything you get the OS, you get, you get the box. You get the, well, you, you, I don't control. know how the box will work. Yeah. Uh, but you get a controller and the OS, and then you might have to build a box to the specifications that they provide. We'll see how that works. Still. Then in sadder news, no, um, no. To, and this happened today, uh, the second of October. Well, the news emerged anyway that Tom Clancy has died at the age of 66. Wikipedia shows it as the first, though. Sorry, as the, f- as the first of October. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the, the news definitely broke okay. today. Um, so um, for those of you who are not familiar with Tom Clancy, he's an author. And for those of us that are gamers, we'll know his name associated with a bunch of franchises. Uh, sure. Splinter Cell uh, comes to mind immediately, but Rainbow Six, yeah. the Rainbow Six franchise is something I played to death. Um, and he writes all kinds of spy and military novels. Uh, Johan, you seem to be quite a fan. Yeah, I am. I probably own all his. I, I was looking at the list on his site. I own all his books uh, on audio audiobooks, uh, Audible. I've listened to. I'm, I'm busy listening to the last two I haven't listened to, but not just that. I mean, Hunt for Red October. Who's not seen that movie? Yes. Um, Starring Sean Connery, you have to go yes. see. <laughs> it's a must. Patriot Games. Yes. Um, oh, yes. He was a co. He was also. It's not on this list, but he's also. Um, oh, that Seal movie of lost two years ago. Uh, he was one of the co-writers of that. The Zero Dark Thirty movie. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, I don't remember the name now. Okay. But what I did see on his website now is that Command and Authority is due for release the third of December. So at least we'll have one more book from him. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, and I'm sure pre-orders on that will explode. Will explode. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to get one, <laughs> you should probably Go no, pre-order. No, I, will, <laughs> pre-order. I know. That's a nice thing about digital books. Yeah, I guess. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Audible's got the same thing. What and the nice thing, thing is yes. books always got released in Audible version, the same as the uh, uh, Kindle version. So mm. Very cool. Um, then in news that might seem unrelated to everyone in South Africa and in, in, in a geek show, America has shut down. <laughs> But, <laughs> but it does affect Star. us <laughs> because it seems to have affected a whole bunch of things, including NASA. Now, apparently, NASA is pretty much 90% shut down. Okay, just explain to me what shut down. Okay. I mean, did so, somebody switch off the yeah, lights? Yeah, America has closed, closed the, the doors, doors and gone home. No, no. not quite. Uh, it, it is, it is a, a maybe a little overstated, but it's not that overstated. What, what happens is the American Congress, I think that's their House of Representatives. Correct. So they've got the Congress. Congress and the Senate, right? Mm-hmm. So 
Congress um, failed to approve a piece of legislation that basically is it's, the budget. It's the budget for the next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so okay. it's just like any other law that comes before them that has to be approved, and then they can spend that budget. And um, the problem was that Congress wanted to tack on the, – the Congress is controlled by the Republican Party. They wanted to tack on a thing that would effectively delay – Obamacare, that's Obama's um, uh, universal medical aid thing. Because that you he, can. Yeah. <laughs> thing that he, that, he pushed, that he pushed through. And they effectively wanted to delay the mandatory cutoff date for that. So um, you have to – basically what they're saying is you have to have a medical aid by the start of 2014, okay. I think is what it says. They wanted to have that pushed out by a year. And so the Senate goes, no, that's not what this bill is for. You can't tack it onto the back of the budget. And and um, and expect you know to to pass through. So the Senate rejected it. Congress rejected it, or the Senate refused to discuss it. Um, Congress then uh, d- decided you know not to vote on the bill, or, or the the bill didn't get passed at least. And now basically the the U.S. federal government has no budget to pay people with for them to do their jobs. So people are losing jobs. It's it's bad. It's really bad for them. And among the agencies affected is NASA. Um, I don't know but if the CIA I, I, is affected. See, Maybe they'll stop like, monitoring all our stuff. The way I read this, I mean, people just didn't pitch for work on, on the first. Well, there's, you can't. Well, they're basically there's, told to stay away. You, uh, <laughs> you, there's, yeah, it's yeah. unpaid leave because there's, it's not like you immediately lose your job, but the fact is there's no money to pay you, so you can't come to work. Basically, is what it comes down to. It's it's rough. Anyway, yeah. and so um, uh, a bit of confusing news um, coming around the Curiosity rover, which is what I really wanted to focus on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and You'll get it and relates. Yeah, it relates. Yeah, and that's <laughs> that. Um, the, a NASA spokesperson said that because of their shutdown, now everything about NASA shut down. They're not tweeting. They're not updating their websites. Um, they said that the Curiosity rover would enter a protective state and would not be collecting any new data. However, um, the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory said that, hang on a second, we're privately run, we're not affected by this at all, and we run the rover as well. And so um, we're going to keep on track. We're going to keep on trucking. Um, so they say that things are continuing on as, you know, as scheduled. Um, and so Caltech, the California Institute of Technology, is keeping the rover running. Um, so despite NASA's shutdown, it looks like we're still exploring the surface of Mars for what it's worth. Keep on trucking. <laughs> um, it's actually pretty funny. Sarcastic rover. I think, I think Annie alerted me to this on the way in. Sarcastic rover. Sarcastic rover, yeah. Uh, tweeted on the way in that it's covered 38 meters or something. Um, but... All its SMSs to NASA have gone unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> it's found alien life forms, but nobody's answering. Yeah. That brings us to the end of the Quick Geek. I'm going to shoot us over to events. A lot of stuff coming up. Firstly is from the 7th to the 11th of October is National Wills Week. This is actually a great opportunity. You can actually go to a website. It'll be in the show notes. And let's bomb it into IRC. Why not? Um, and you can go to participating lawyers, and they will draft you a will for free. Um, and that's actually a pretty important thing. So just go and check out the, the relevant stuff. I don't want to geek out over wills. <laughs> but um, during this week, it's, a, it's going to be available for free. Um, just go and check it out. It's really worth it. Sorry, if I may. NASA.gov. The site is off. Yes, yeah. Oh, um, wow. And the Obama so not, care, up, not updating websites. No? I mean, it's off. Yeah, a lot of the websites are off. So uh, the Obamacare website's off. Healthcare.gov is off. Whitehouse.com. Um, uh, it's whitehouse.gov. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Obama signed special legislation in that the White House would keep running. Okay. The is telling us that apparently Obama signed in special legislation so the White House would keep mm-hmm. running. Whitehouse.org is down. <laughs> the gov. It'll be dot .gov. But, oh, dot, dot .gov. Yeah. But it's, it'll probably – the website will be down, but the White House itself is operational. Anyway, this, this weekend, Sorry. I'm moving us on. Rage is happening from the 4th to the 6th of October. Um, that is this weekend, if you're not counting. The fourth is Friday. Telcom is making a big announcement. You can read about it on my broadband already. <laughs> so they are, um, amongst other things, maybe they'll announce something else. But um, amongst other things, they've announced um, a really cool thing uh, around their broadband products that's going to see, um, f- uh, I think, unmetered content delivery through DSTV Ooh. and catch up and stuff um, and gaming. So if you're a gamer, they're going to be offering stuff specifically for gaming and content delivery 
Um, and yeah, you can go read about that on my broadband already. Um, then I assume the mixer bomb this end. The delicious festival is happening happening at the Kailami Equestrian Estate in Blue Hills. Um, that's also this coming weekend. Hobby X is happening at Gallagher Estate. When? Also this coming weekend. Then movies, Nothing for Mahala and Gravity are opening this week. And Star Wars Reads Day. What okay, it, this whole week is Star Wars. Okay, very, very Read cool. a Star Wars book. Um, isn't Star Wars a movie? But there are books that I know, happen but, after. But, but, but why? But, yeah, I don't understand either. <laughs> I, but we're just what? not Star Wars geeks, man. Can, can, I, can I send you a... I, I, I copy one day and you can actually read what happens to Han Solo and all of those guys I, I, I must after say, the movie. I must say I did read some of the, the wiki entries, not Wikipedia, but Star Wars wiki entries on cool. what happens to Leia and Han's children, spoiler alert. Um, and <laughs> but is it truly canon though? Has it been accepted oh, yeah, as yeah. canon? Some the, 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 yeah, that's, that that's, all Star Wars uh, franchise still keeps around. Yeah. Well, that's also interesting is to go and read in the wikis what has been accepted as canon and what is not accepted okay. as canon. So there's this, yeah. So uh, it's yeah, it's a very very deep, uh, very very deep lore as far as Star Wars is concerned. There's not just books but comic books as well that have expanded the canon. Um, so yeah, very interesting. This has to be the first weekend where Rage and Sexpo are not on the same day. Yeah, or weekend. I, 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 want, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if they kind of decided. Hang on, this is targeting some of the same audience. Maybe we should. some of the same audience. <laughs> <laughs> well done, just say, yeah. Yo, yeah, Hobby X and Rage should not that be sharing sh- the same weekend. Poor. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop us there for events and move us into the next section of the show where we talk about things a little more in depth. Um, and I call it What Geekery Is This? So the first thing I want to do quickly talk, well, quickly talk about, maybe not that quickly, is Samsung's killer feature in South Africa. And it, is it feature or features? No, feature. One feature I'm going to highlight as the feature that sets them apart head and shoulders above everyone else. And it has nothing to do with their phone. In fact, I would say, and um, hopefully no one at Samsung ever gets a hold of this and goes, Jan is never doing anything ever again. No, that probably won't happen. But they'll be unhappy. They'd be unhappy if they hear me say the following. If you put a (laughs) Samsung device next to other top-end Android devices out there, I would argue for the other device being a better device. If you take the Sony Xperia devices, the Xperia Zs, and you put it down next to the Notes and the, and the S series, I would prefer the Xperia Zs over the... One. one. Why? Okay, why? yeah, motivate. Okay. So indestructible. <laughs> well, almost. There we go. Um, so they're, they're, they're waterproof. But they were built for that. So don't compare those. Hang on a second. The yes, Xperia they were built Z for that. Xperia Z was built to be... <laughs> Yes, that's why it's a better phone, I would argue. The next thing, let's go down to software, is the Samsung uh, interface is rubbish still. TouchWiz. So, for example, I wanted to create folders on my... So on my launch thing. So on Android, for those of you who don't know, you get get this... I'm going to move it a little further away. You have this launcher bar at the bottom, right? A lot like a Mac. Um, And you can create folders on that in stock Android. Yes. Not on Unity. Uh, um, uh, TouchWiz. TouchWiz. Uh, so I'm already ragging on Ubuntu. Sorry. Okay. Creating a folder on the home screens of a Samsung device, you can't just drag icons onto one another and create folders. You have to push hold, say new folder, name it. But you and can then still things. create the folder. No, yes, but, but they, it's tedious they, compared to anything. Yeah. So there's little things. Then, sa- but Sony, those are pet no, it's not just pet peeves. No, but it's it, why I you, argue that it's a better got device. a stock ROM, and you say, this is how the user experience will be. And then some other guys come, no, 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 no. we've changed it. Yeah. Well, Samsung has just kept the user experience the same from the old version yes. of Android. That's what I, that's what I don't yeah, like. Yeah. They've kept the same button layouts. They don't have the Recents button. They've stubbornly st- uh, decided to stick with the Menu button rather than switch to the Recents button. So okay. th- uh, they're fragmenting the Android user experience okay. is, one, is one gripe. Yeah, that's a pet peeve. That, that yes, I agree, okay. is, not a, yep. is not a real gripe. Um, now, um, the, the, um, and if you look at other devices, the HTC One X, I can have similar pet peeves about the way they do things, um, but it's a, it's a better constructed device than the Samsung Galaxy S4, I would argue. The S4 feels plasticky. Um, it it's, feels it's still on the Z. Say again? You're still on the I'm, I'm comparing the, the Samsung Galaxy X, S4 to the Xperia Z and the HTC One X. Okay. Okay. Um, and there are other ones I can, I can bring in here as well. Even the, the Huawei's 
um, feel better constructed than the Samsung devices okay. in, in some in some respects. Right. Um, and the but other, now, what and, did they do? You know, and the other thing that Sony has, by the way, is it's very close to a stock Android experience. That is just something I personally like very much. Now, Same. So, so when I talk about Samsung's killer feature, it has nothing to do with me actually liking the device, is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> it is the fact that they give you what they call an accidental damage from handing warranty on their top-tier devices. That is, the Samsung Galaxy S4 gets a, gets a two-year warranty where if you drop it and the screen shatters or you drop it in water, they fix it, no questions asked. Twice. Oh. They'll fix it twice. Now, with a Note 3, they've introduced what they call the accidental... Oh, sorry. Did I miss something? The Don't they come to you as well? No. no. That's oh, the new okay, one. Okay. So, with a Note 3, they've introduced sorry. what they call sorry. the accidental ha- damage from handling premium warranty. <laughs> also two years. <laughs> okay. Um, but... Um, and, okay. Maybe I'll get to that later. But like, they, they've, they've really blown me away with this. Because what they now do is they, they will come and fetch the phone from you. They've got a dedicated call center, they claim, for just for Note 3 customers. And if you, if you drop the phone or drop it in water, and this, you know, if the screen shutters or if there's liquid damage, they won't just fix it like with a previous ADH warranty. They will replace it. No questions oh. asked. You get two free phones. In fact, so you buy one Note 3 and you get two free. <laughs> so you get three Note 3s for the price of one effectively uh, you don't get to use them simultaneously it's, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's like having a uh-huh. backup in, in yeah. eve you know you've got your backup stored away or whatever if your phone breaks and and i must say when the adh warranty was first launched i'm like okay well you know that's cool but the guys are banking on the fact that you don't want to be without your phone for for how long however long it takes them to fix it and i've heard some some reports that it can take them really really, really long, really long yeah. to fix a a samsung dev- uh, a, a s4 under this warranty with the Note 3 thing, they've, they've blown that out the water. There's no more, um, you know, okay, I better be careful with my phone. Otherwise, I'm, uh, I, I'm without it for three weeks. It's, oops, I've dropped my phone. I'm going to call Samsung. I expect a new device tomorrow. Deliver to me, and they'll come fetch the old one and give me a new one. That's amazing. And, um, and I, I, I would also… Plus? Plus? Carries over. Yes, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Absolutely right. I still wanted to. Now, if I subscribe to the service, yeah, if you <laughs> if, if you don't use your ADH warranty and but and you get a replacement top tier Samsung product upgrade, yeah. an upgrade, then the, wh- whatever um, replacements you didn't use carry over to your next device now under ADH Premium. That is rad. Oh wow! So that's the incentive to not just throw your phone around. Is well, they, not just that. They There's up. that very uh, clever way of keeping you on Samsung. As well. Because yes. when you've got two replacements in the bank. It's like an app bonus almost. And you go, yeah. And you go to Sa- Like when they say, oh, but, but you're three months away from your app bonus, sir. Are you sure you want to? But no, <laughs> it's not that. No. It, it also no. kind of feels like it's like a like license to, you know, scuff the thing up and throw it around and be awful to mm. your phone, you know, in a way. No, it's just when you, you do for an upgrade, you walk into the shop. What are you going to look at first? In the next Samsung, yeah. I've got two it's replacements in the bank. This is brilliant. This is, <laughs> yeah. this is brilliant. Yeah. So this to me, this to me is the equivalent of what BIS did for BlackBerry in South Africa. This I, I, I'm going to predict is going to do for Samsung if the other guys don't step up. And Sony are actually in a good position. Their phone is already pretty indestructible. So just tell, I mean, like it's almost <laughs> having a warranty like this is almost like saying, listen, I am confident in the fact that I've built a phone that's built to last. You can drop it in water and it won't get damaged, you know, under, cert- under most circumstances, especially the Z Ultra, even as an open headphone jack now. So you don't even have to worry about that. You just have to keep all the other but ports if closed. if something now oh, goes wow. wrong, do they replace it? Um, Samsung. Sony. No. And so <laughs> th- that's what I'm saying. If th- they can quite easily step up and it will be like them saying, I believe in this product so much that if, if you know, it gets damaged – because of water or whatever, I will fix it for you at least. Even if they don't replace it, I will fix it for you. The equivalent of the ADH warranty. Because the fact is, like, um, cost-conscious people and careful buyers, are. this is going to be a major mm. consideration. Just like BIS was a major consideration. People didn't just switch away from BlackBerry because Android and iPhone were better. Because they were getting better value for money still on BlackBerry by having an unmetered internet experience on BlackBerry with BIS. And only when it became really, really bad 
and um, and when you know it started looking as if BlackBerry was not going to pull up its socks, did people say, okay, you know what, it's time to switch? Um, well, it and, sounded like it was the only reason that people were staying with BlackBerry was well, it was or, BIS absolutely, yeah. um, and and we, we we're definitely starting to see that with the move to BlackBerry Ten where BIS is falling away. Yeah, um, and so similar to BIS, I think this thing is going to be a killer feature for Samsung. Especially if they're the only okay, ones. But now doing they, it. That, that's only available on the Note Three. Note Three and S Four. The S Four has the ADH Normal, which is a repair, okay. and the Note Three has an ADH Premium, which is replace. Okay. And the guys that already got S Fours, they were, was it from launch on the S Four? Yes, from launch on the S Four. Okay. And it's not backdated to other devices. Now that's where the analogy breaks down, obviously, because BIS was available on even the cheapest two hundred rand a month. BlackBerry that you could get, whereas this ADH warranty is only available on premium products, for which the market in South Africa is already limited. Um, uh, the majority, um, and, and I've had industry sources confirm this um, with statistics from bodies whose business it is to collect statistics like this, um, the majority of the phone market is sub-1,000 rand. People, well, it's, it might have gone a, a little bit above that now with inflation, but still, the, much of the market is it, is wants to spend less than a thousand rand on a phone, whereas the Galaxy S4 obviously is a nine thousand rand Paul phone. Paul says he's got a Nokia for you for eight hundred rand that's better constructed than the Samsung. <laughs> Making my point for there. I'm, I'm glad Paul's on my side here. Um, the, 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 yeah, uh, and, I, and I must say the, the S4 just doesn't feel like a well constructed phone, but damn, this warranty is nice. Absolutely. All right, so that, that, that was. And that happened after I've repaired my Note 2 screen twice. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's so lovely. Yeah. Thanks, something. Time for an upgrade, especially if you're on a Note 2. I don't know. I looked at the Oh, Note wait. 3. The Note 2 was last year, so you still have a year of contract yeah, I still got a year of contract rate, but I, I thought the S2. Note 3 is not that exciting. The watch is. Really? Yeah. I'm the exact opposite. Uh, that watch looks so I mean, come on. Gaudy. It's a watch. <laughs> yeah, and? It's a 4,600 Rand watch on top of oh, that. I haven't it's seen the price yet. No, they forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move us along uh, into. That's still cool. <laughs> 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 I'm not moving us along. I mean, notice how we don't wear a watch. <laughs> yeah. These yeah. are my wrists. Yeah. The guy keeps on changing the screen. The girl, sorry, I watched that long video on, on YouTube. She changes the screen and it goes this way and takes photos and reads the email. And it's, it's pretty. It does it's nothing that the phone can't do itself. I'd rather whip out a thing that has a bigger screen and look at that. Oh, the camera. Just think. And, <laughs> and I've seen the, the, the other thing. The other it's drawback. got a camera on the side here. Yeah. I mean, like. The other drawback to the Galaxy Gear <laughs> is that, anything. as far as I know, it only works with a Note 3 at the moment. Oh, and, that's stupid. And the other thing is, so there'll be probably be bundle deals for it. Mm. Um, and the uh, now if you go look at, <laughs> it sounds like I'm a Sony fanboy, but the, oh, <laughs> the, no. the fact is Sony has a smartwatch and it works on just about any Android phone. It's got a minimum Android version limit, um, but, you know, or version requirement, I should say, but... It works. It's not like a Samsung, like the Samsung Galaxy Gear, which only works on the Galaxy Note. It will work with almost any Android device. So, okay. But right. it doesn't have a built-in camera. It doesn't have like the whole project or not project. It doesn't have like the speakers, speakers built in. So it's much cheaper because it doesn't have all those components. Um, so watch got speakers in. It's that Galaxy Gear is crazy, man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to draw the line. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, anyway, moving us in. <laughs> swiftly oh, along. Um, Serious speakers. Luke, <laughs> what is the headphone jack? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Luke, what is Firefox or Firefox and Chrome doing to plugins? So remember now carefully that there is a distinction between uh, uh, plugins and extensions. Yes. Okay. So what Firefox and Chrome are now doing is they said, right, we are now HTML5. Why do we still have plugins to this date? And what they mean by that is things like Flash, Flash. and QuickTime and those kinds Java. of Java. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and both browsers, pretty much within two days of one another, said they are going to get rid of this within pretty reasonable time frames. Wow. Yes. But Chrome comes with a version of Flash built in by the right. It's baked right in there. Flash seems to be an exception across the board. Is that no, not an extension anymore? <laughs> yes. But it's an extension, but it's too widely used to get rid of. Okay. So now so, it's so like. Poor a, Java is like, yeah. what about me? Well, that's not a bad thing. 
<laughs> Especially um, considering the security loopholes that were discovered man, in Java just recently. They're, they're getting rid of like Java 6 has been amazing. It's just become freaking warfare out there <laughs> <laughs> because of all the exploits that people have been using okay, against. Sorry. But you, you just clarify, you said the difference between an extension and a plugin. Yes. So plugins are like what we use, and that's, that confused me initially, and that's why I, I wanted Luke to clarify. That's what I'm um, asking. Yeah, okay. So, so an, an, an extension is, for example, your, uh, changing the way your tab layout looks. Um, okay. Or um, your fla- – like I use Flagfox to, to do so some – So what are these? Are these like extensions or plugins? Those would be plugins. No, no extensions, rather. Sorry. Because they change, they change behavior, but they – Adblock. Is an extension. Yes. There we go. That's an Thank example. You. JavaScript. Okay. Ugh, Java, no script. No, no script. I'm yeah. saying because yeah. I've got extension. MyPlex in here and I've got Google Plus and I've got Pocket. So Formally read it later. Um, Google Cast is here. Remote so the plugins machine. would be like your Flash and your Silverlight and your Java applets and those kinds of things. Okay, so things. something that actually will affect the page that you itself. you actually run something else. Ah, Okay. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. All right, so um, did, did they give an indication of um, how many version increments we're getting before they – Well, it looks like for Firefox, it's already in Aurora, which means it's two betas ahead or some such thing like that. So okay. soon, pretty much, for Firefox. Imminent. I don't know about Chrome, uh, okay. but it's – and I open it to be sure. It's yes. all of a sudden to come out of this and say, oh, no, sorry, we're not going to uh, support these. You will now have to have – I think it's – they said it's going to do the, – the plugins, you can still use them. But they will be click to enable. Yes, yes. So you have to make that. Yeah. I was going to ask, what about other other media like Safari, yeah. for example, um, allows QuickTime by default. Yes. And so when you go to Mac optimized sites, um, you know you don't have to worry about fudging uh, with codecs and whatever for QuickTime format. Um, it's it's in, in Safari. But if you are using another browser, you need those codecs and yes. you need something that can play back. So you know VLC is a good example of something that, that you can just install and um, it can play back these files for you in your browser, but that's a plugin. But now, if, you, if you're using a plugin as well to maybe have some kind of like coding extensions to build, built in, how are you going to enable that kind of content uh, if it's not, not like a pane that you click yeah. on or something? Maybe so it does exactly, something there'll have to be like a, a pop-down or whatever they call those, yeah. a slide-down thing from the top to say, hey, we've blocked extensions or this, you're trying to run this extension, but we've blocked it. Do you want to enable? Like Vista. <laughs> no, you please act. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Blocked operating system. Would you like to enable it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so that brings us to the end of what geekery is this. And before we move on, something I forgot to mention um, that we discussed before the show, but not during the show, uh, with regards to events coming up, is the My Broadband event, which is... Something I'm could recover. I'm in, in, involved. Good recovery. <laughs> I'm involved in um, it, it, because I work at my broadband. Um, and something I, I just learned tonight, in fact, is that the we're getting 600 megabits per second of backhaul bandwidth um, at Gallagher Estate, courtesy of Telcom, and then we're going to get Wi-Fi courtesy of G Connect, so that everybody will be able to use it. So that ought to be fun. Uh, we're blocking torrents, so don't even think about it. Um, Please don't. I and mean, we're blocking NZBs, so leave your media servers at home. Just bring yes. your tablets and smartphones, please. <laughs> yeah, every year. I mean, I don't know why guys do that. I mean, what are you trying to... Well, you're trying to prove a point, right? <laughs> How fast can it go? We'll find you in the audience. <laughs> we'll tar an and example. feather you. There you go. <laughs> well, on the stage. And we'll... I'll stream it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> to your friends. <laughs> yes. So if you want to streak, just let us know. Yeah. From and the so, left or from the right. And, and so something else worth mentioning is <laughs> In that <an> orderly fashion. <laughs> um, streaming is going to be, happen, be happening over dedicated bandwidth, apparently. Um, and that is being handled by Let's Talk Network. Thank you very much, Let's Talk Network. Yay! And Tim. Um, <laughs> Tim, is, Tim is part of Let's Talk Network. He's just not in the show today. Um, and Mindset, thank you very much. Yeah, um, we're doing the cameras. The cameras and equipment and, and stuff. Mix and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll, we'll um, still details are to be hashed out, but that's it. If you can't well, be you can there. in the same breath then mention that the whole broadband conference is then scheduled to be broadcast. That's what I wanted to ask. I didn't want to say anything. No, it is. It's okay. scheduled to be broadcasted, I think, the Friday night. So you can PVR it. 
So if you are going to streak, I'll see if I can leave it in the edit. Um, <laughs> that, that's going to severely impact your PG rating, I think. No, nah, it's fine. It looks push up the audience. <laughs> so if you are going to streak, just let us know you're coming from left or right So stage. you can start advertising it. So we can just pull the camera in the right direction <laughs> for the beginning of the run. Um, and then, yeah, we can broadcast that for you on Friday night. You can PVR and show your family. Yeah. So <laughs> You could so, put some sweet advertising blurring around them or something. <laughs> I'll sell those spots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you if you can't join us at the physical event, you can at least join us in spirit, either through the live stream or you can catch the delayed broadcast on Mindset Networks. Uh, Mindset Learn, my bad. Thank you. Channel 319 DSTV. Cool. And not just Channel 319 DSTV anymore. I hear a little birdie has told me that uh, Top TV's learning channel is changing to Mindset. Um, it's actually being rebranded as Mindset. That is what TV with Tinnis is reporting. Serious? Yes. How did he pick it up? Tinas is jacked in. Like, <laughs> he's jacked into the Matrix directly. <laughs> um, and Mindset's also coming to a free bouquet near you. Open View HD and Free Vision are both going to be running Mindset. So you don't have to pay. Tinas. T- yeah. Tinas Ferrari. He writes for Channel 24 now, but he is like the, one of the premier television journalists in the country. The premier channel, television journalist in the country, I would say, almost. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I, I say almost because I don't know every single television journalist in the country, but Tinas breaks news like there's no tomorrow. All right. With that, we never end a show on anything but a positive note. And so just in case we were going to end on that rant <laughs> about Firefox and Samsung and all that stuff, we have a kicker. And the kicker is courtesy of Luke. Lego calendar automatically syncs with your smartphone. How does this work, Luke? That looks S- like an abacus. It well, it's, it's Lego tiles put on a okay. wall. And uh, the premise is so simple and cheesy. I love it to pieces. So th- as you see the Lego on that image, uh, that represents your calendar. There's, there's a row for each person. And the Lego blocks are, are colored per project that you might be using. And the idea behind it is... Uh, it's MS in- Project on a wall. It is MS Project on a wall. But it's awesome. It's Lego. So you, you take your smartphone after you've finished putting all your Lego blocks on there and you take a picture of it and it will automatically sync to your, you know, whichever cloud-based calendar that you might be using, like, you know, Google Calendar and so forth. It's nice and geeky, no real practical application. I love it to pieces. Well, you've got like a visual aid in your office for how far your project is. The only problem is you've got no indication what the colors mean. So you'll have to have a legend somewhere. So on uh, on a different like picture uh, that I didn't, include they they have like a legend so that you can see what the the colors represent and you can even have little uh lego men res- representing people within the project and so on it's <laughs> that's great very cool that's great with that i i'm going to land our ship thank you very much for joining us in the show today luke where can people find you i am on twitter at frk yeah uh i haven't been posting a lot in a very long while but, but I'm, I'm reading post at you. yeah i'm reading all the time so uh just tweet at me and I will probably respond. Cool. Johan, where can people find you? www.who-else.co.za Good stuff. And then probably on Mindset Learn. <laughs> if what? it's running, I'm doing something right. Oh, okay. And, and, and by Mindset Learn, you don't mean a website or anything? You mean the channel? The channel. All right. You're, you're making it run, making it tick. I try my best. <laughs> I'm Jan Vermeulen. You can find me at mybroadband.co.za. That's where I spend most of my waking hours. I'm also on Twitter at JanVZA. I will tweet. Um, as Whenever I have time, I'll tweet some cool stories um, that's happening around the tech space, mostly for my broadband, but not exclusively. Um, and I'm also on Google+, Plus, Jan Vermeulen, and then Circle the Ugly Dude. Um, I think I still have long hair in my – and I'm falling. I'm falling off the Grand Canyon in my um, Google+. Plus. Are you image. gray there? <laughs> not yet. I, I might be a little less gray in that picture <laughs> as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you again hopefully next week. We will not catch you next no. week. We forgot because we were going to have a whole slide dedicated to my broadband, and we didn't talk about it when we were supposed to talk about it. You There's fools. no show next week because we're going to be at the My Broadband Conference. So, But please come and find us there. Yes. Or we will please. be streaming from there. there will be, we will hopefully have IRC or some kind of chat going, similar to our live shows. Um, so um, instead of coming in the evening, come during the day. And we'll be at Rage on Sunday, and we'll be wearing the black T-shirts with a big G on it. So if you see us there, come up, come say hello, buy us a cold drink. And get interviewed. You can tell us what manner of geek you are. Absolutely. You know you want to. All right. (laughs) Catch you next time.